YouTube whiskey lovers. I'm the malt activist and I have a very old school art bag here with me today that we are going to try. This is the 2006 a bottling of the Airy Nambisht. <laughs> So, for those of you who haven't heard about this particular uh, expression from Artbeg, it has a bit of a history which I will share with you very very quickly because ultimately it's about the whiskey that we're going to drink. So Artbeg has a very tumultuous past where it was, you know, he kept getting shut down and then reopening and shut down and reopening and it was, uh, you know, it was in a very bad state and nobody wanted it. And uh, so uh, around 1980s, late 1980s, uh, they pulled the plug on the distillery and they said, ah, to hell with the art bag. I don't think anybody's ever going to want to drink their single malts. And then uh, they reopened again for a few months in 1990. They distilled some spirits. I think it was for just like two or three months. Uh, they distilled some spirit and then they kind of closed down again. And so you had all this, you know, spirit that was lying in the warehouse. Um, at that time, they don't obviously throw away the, the liquid, even if the distillery shut down. So this was lying there in the warehouse until 1997. The most amazing thing happened and Glenn Morangi uh, said, hey, we'll take a gamble on Artbeg and we're pretty sure people will want to drink their whiskey. And they did, they reopened it. And uh, of course became billionaires after that. Uh, but no, they, they um, they had faith in the distillery, they had faith in the spirit. There was like quite a bit of a cult following for Artbeg, uh, you know, in the 60s, 70s and 80s. Uh, and so they said, you know, we'll cash in on this newfound resurgence of, uh, you know, demand for single malts. And so they did, and they set about restarting the distillery. However, while this is happening, now mind you, they're not going to be able to get spirit out into the hands of the people as soon. Right, so they can't wait 10 years or seven years or eight years for people to start drinking art bag again. So what did they do? They went back to the spirits that were distilled in the 90s and they brought them up. And they said, okay, we don't have any new spirit for you guys to taste because it's still too young, but here's some of the old stuff and we hope you like it. And you know, we hope that once, once the 10 year old comes out, which is what they were aiming for, then um, you'll buy that as well. But here, in the meantime, here's something you satisfy your, your thirst buds. Thirst buds? Thirst buds. Sure, thirst buds. Your thirst. And so, they released, among other bottlings, they released this whiskey called the Ari Nam Beist, which basically means shelter of the beast. It has absolutely no significance to the whiskey itself, other than the fact that Artbeg like naming cool bottles, which is fantastic. So this spirit that we're trying now is distilled in 1990, bottled in 2006, so let's say 15 years old. Then the following year, they released a 2007 bottling and then a 2008 bottling of exactly the same spirit called the Airy Nam Beist. Um, so what we have today is the 15 year old, uh, sorry, the 2006 uh, vin it's actually 1990 vintage released in 2006. Apologies. And that's what we're going to taste today. Mm. Man, if you're an Isla file like me, just putting your nose in a glass with these kind of aromas, it's such an instant trajectory back to that island. It's, I love it. It like, it happens to me every single time and I never get bored of it. Um, it's a nice, deep, lovely, light golden color. Uh, bottled at 46%. So immediately briny. And the perfect example of what an Isla whiskey tastes like, oh, sorry, smells like. Um, because you know, it has, it has uh, the smokiness and the peatness, but there's a there's a lot of you know sea salt and brininess, and there's um, uh, fishermen's ropes and nets. Uh, uh, it's like it's like it's like standing by the by the seashore uh, with the waves, but you're next to this this fisherman's boat, and you can smell the uh, sea salt in the air, and you can smell the uh, the the nets. 
you know, and the ropes. Uh, and it's just, it's amazing how, you know, just aromas like this can you know, paint such amazing pictures in your head. But then that's not all. Uh, what I love most about uh, these old school art bags, uh, actually most old school whiskeys is the amount of balance that they had for some reason. And what I find with this one is that it's so perfectly balanced with the sweetness and it's like a... Uh, like a vanilla uh, pudding maltiness that works so well with the the smokiness and the tariness and the suit uh, and just balance itself perfectly uh, and then uh, these soft sweet lemons yeah I also get this chocolate fudge and um, uh, and and, uh, and toasted marshmallows. Uh, now I'm just being romantic, uh, and go I'm going to get carried away because if you if I don't stop now, then it's just going to be this entire recipe book of flavors that are just going to keep popping into my mind. Now, have you seen uh, Ratatouille? Uh, I don't know if you have. If you've seen Ratatouille, there's a scene where Remy, who's the main rat, uh, tries to uh, tries to show his brother what taste uh, feels like. Right, because he he, he didn't give a, they didn't give a crap about taste, um, uh, and so he you know when he puts that little bit of cheese in his mouth and a strawberry and, and then he has his little um, uh, these swirls of light that rotate around his head and that's that's exactly how I feel right now. I feel like Remy's brother who's just when he notices something exquisite, you have these flashes of imagery that hit your head and. I can understand why Artbeg is such a cult distillery, and it's sad that you know it didn't, it didn't produce all the way through uh, in the 90s and, and the late 80s. We would have had, we would have been sitting on some ah oh, exquisite spirit. But hey, I'm glad for what we have, and I am not complaining. So, like I said, just a typically beautiful Isla nose. <sighs> yeah, I can spot this from a mile away, literally. Easy. It's getting more crisp now, becoming more red fruit. And again, you know, older spirits are so much more complex and they keep evolving and it's such a lovely, lovely thing to have in your hand. And I, it's sometimes it's sad that, uh, you know, people, are, some people are not gonna be able to taste this, you know, and it's sad and they should. And then some people, they only taste the new stuff and they're like, oh, well, I don't uh, I don't really like art bag that much. And you're like, dude, have you tried the old stuff? It's amazing. But hey, what are you gonna do? So, lovely nose. Let's see how it is on the palate. Mmm, 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 mmm. Wow. Yes. At forty-six percent, this is the perfect delivery strength that is required for this whiskey. All the flavors come in nice and and so smooth. They just flow on your palate. There's honey and uh, there's cereal, smoked cereal. Uh, there's bits of uh, like burnt bacon as well. Syrup, hay, uh, and then all of this together just wrapped in this really nice fine smoke and, uh, and malt, you know? And you can really taste the malt. And you can even taste that barley grist. Um, it's amazing, it just, it's such, it feels like such a natural spirit, you know? And, and uh, of course, that's what whiskey is. It's an extremely natural spirit, but just the way this is constructed. Mm. So delicate, so creamy, lovely mouthfeel, nice long finish. I can, oh, I can sit and talk about this for hours. Wow. And I think I have. I think I already have. So apologies. I shouldn't have. But damn. I think this is a... Uh, uh, this is a treat. Um, it's made even more special, uh, you know, by knowing that this was... Uh, this spirit was distilled at a time of such, uh, you know, troubles uh, and adversity for the distillery. Uh, and so it's, uh, it's a little bit of history in the glass uh, as far as that is concerned, uh, especially if it's history about something that you're 
really really passionate about like I am about the distillery uh, so it's nice it's nice uh, to uh, try something that's a throwback to that time to that era uh, to those memories I suppose Wow look this is a wonderfully constructed whiskey um, am I absolutely biased just because of what it is 100% but I think there's a certain romance and a charm about trying whiskies from that time um, trying whiskies that have a story trying whiskies that you know you have an emotional attachment to and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it I'm not lying by saying this is a good whiskey. It's not like, you know, I'm saying that it's an absolutely terrible whiskey and I'm saying, hey, no, no, it's amazing. No, no, it's it's a great whiskey made even better uh, because of my emotional attachment and the association I have with it. So yes, there you have it. I've been meaning to review this one for a long time. I'm glad I got to finally do it today. So thank you. Thank you for joining me for this whiskey review. I'm the Malt Activist. Until next time, peace.